guys and welcome to another video. So after my last video I finished my go to sketchbook and after that I felt a bit lost where to go next. So after that I bought a new one. And I want to start it today and while I do that I want to share my thoughts on starting new sketchbooks, starting art in general and any art piece and also the fear of the first page and what to do about it. This sketchbook is a bit bigger than my last one. I feel like everybody has their own preferred sketching size. Some people like to draw small, some people like to draw big. And for me, my last one was way too small, so I bought um, a bit bigger one. I'm heavy handed and I really need the space. But one tip that I have is if you are afraid of starting or messing up any page, I would recommend to buy cheaper sketchbooks because if you buy like the fancy one with watercolor paper for, I don't know, 30 euros, these things can be so expensive then it will be such a huge deal if you mess up one page for you because you know the money you invested in the sketchbook but if you buy like a middle sized sketchbook that is not too expensive or like a cheap cheap sketchbook it's okay the pages it's, it's just paper it's nothing special and this one is from Hannah Müller again my go-to brand um, but it's like not cheap cheap it was like 14 euros but uh, there are also more expensive ones out there this one has quite thick paper so um, that's what I chose and you literally don't need fancy art supplies to make good art. I'm just using my favorite pencil sign brush pen, which is also super cheap. I tried so many pens and this is my favorite one, um, but it is not the waterproof one. And maybe I will include some of these pastel colors from Faber Castell, but I'm not sure yet. As I go to the pages of new sketchbooks, I'm often terrified of ruining the perfect first white page. Because if I ruin the first page, I lose interest in finishing the sketchbook ever. I have so many started ones already and here I am. Starting a new one already. Woo. And every time there's this emotional roller coaster. Should I start now? Am I ready? What do I even draw? Where to start? What to do? What? So here's my first tip for that. That's the page I'm gonna draw on. There are days where I feel more confident than on other days. It's just true, it will happen. On some days I feel like I can draw everything and on others I don't have the mental like state to draw something good. It's just how it is. I just open a random sketchbook page and draw somewhere in the middle because if I mess up it's just one random page somewhere in the middle nothing more nothing less as for the drawing subject I'm gonna go with something where I can improvise and just warm myself a bit up something I don't stress myself too much over I have enough pages to challenge myself after this one so here's my second tip if you feel really insecure you can start with some uh, light pens or colored pencils or something that is like light for the underdrawing and as for the subject I would use something that is more within your comfort zone something that you know how to draw something that you draw really often or uh, something where you can improvise some forms you often draw for some people it's faces for some it's characters maybe your own room you're seeing right now and for me it's plants because that's something I often don't need references for and it often doesn't look too bad. Speaking of that, I feel like we have a weird definition for that. Yes, everybody has their own standards for themselves, I get that. But have you had the situation where you showed your sketchbook or sketches to other people and they genuinely liked the pages you hated so badly? Especially in school when some friends looked in my fully oversketched math notebook and were so amazed by it. But I always thought they just don't know better, right? They just don't see how bad it is because they have no idea what good art looks like. That or my art wasn't actually as bad as I thought, like in comparison to my uh, then practicing time, of course. But we ourselves are our hardest critics and it's good because that way we improve and challenge ourselves. But when we get too focused on improving as fast and efficiently as possible and don't value the mistakes that we have to make in order to improve, it, it won't work. It's not just some sketching time we have to fill up and suddenly we're like, geniuses and very good at this. We have to see and acknowledge what is wrong in order for our brain to stop doing these mistakes. When you're thinking about having a beautiful perfect sketchbook from start to finish without any bad page inside, don't let me start on that one. Because I know so many artists, artists and illustrators that are way better than me and even these people show sketchbooks to me like, yeah, that arm looks a bit off, yeah, yeah, that page, that, that wasn't it, skip that. So even these people feel insecure about their art and their art is gorgeous. Meaning we will never have a sketchbook where we love each page equally, so why stress about it that much? 
It is such a high skill for somebody to be able to portray anything they want without any references page by page and like be fully satisfied with this. So acknowledge your mistakes and either fix them right in the sketch or acknowledge your mistakes and like cover them and fix them that way or acknowledge them and just leave them in. Leave them in and accept them and do better next time. I can tell you one thing. I had some sketchbooks in my application processes for some universities where they wanted to see how the students are able to keep up with the sketchbook. And my perfectionistic past self was like, huh, I'm, I'm gonna plan every page like a layout in advance. I'm gonna sketch everything digitally beforehand and only then, when I'm sure that everything is perfect, no mistakes are in there, then I'm gonna draw that in the sketchbook inside. My point is, half of the pages looked so dead because it looked so planned out that it was lacking what makes sketches so, so alive and so interesting. And on the other half I still fucked up, so <laughs> that was so much work for nothing. So why bother doing that than just going in directly and filling it with authentic and real sketches. So don't plan everything beforehand and let the process be. This is the finished first sketch. It's just a random page inside of the random sketchbook, like a warming up page or something. So for my sketches, I'm out of ideas. I don't know what to draw, what to sketch. So I decided to go for a little hike in the woods. Maybe I see something interesting, some inspiration, some ideas. I don't know, uh, even if the weather is not that great, but um, I have to get out of here somehow. <laughs> I don't even see the sky, but it's, it's there. Finding drawing subjects is also a hurdle that I always come across. Sometimes I'm so motivated to get something on the page, but I have no idea what to draw. And I think so much about it and nothing comes out and it is it, it just ruins the sketching day for me. I lose interest and go watch some Netflix show instead and end it that way. Because the more I don't know what I want to draw, the more I get frustrated and afraid to mess up the whole page. So what I do in these kind of situations is to inspire myself from something that surrounds me. Might be some illustration books, or some fan art I want to do, or maybe, and this works best for myself, uh, I do a little trip, like this little hike I'm doing. I take a lot of photos of things I notice and also focus myself to look more into details. I don't just walk through the forest and back, I try to hear the noises, to smell the air and acknowledge all of the colors. Do I see any leaves or animals or find something I do not expect? Hey, like there wasn't much happening but i've decided to still draw some trees because there were a lot of thin ones and i thought of doing like this little dark forest and improvise it and not look directly at my reference pics or my footage that i took um and just put it together that way you know what i'm gonna go with the first page today i i feel kind of confident today i, I can do it i guess so while sketching and experimenting i realized that i often overwork the page meaning it is just as equally detailed on every inch of the page and my eye doesn't even know what to look at. And for this problem I discovered that the white space on the page plays a huge role on how the viewer sees the page. So today I want to challenge myself and play with the white space of the page, maybe even on both pages. So for this one I wanted to get very detailed in line work and use the white space silhouette to create something out of this. So I slowly start to work the trees up in details and think of ways to include this white space. While sketching details I always try to get random. Let's call this another tip, to get random. This can mean two things, either just try setting lines with your supplies that you haven't thought about before, try to improvise your next move, your next color, your next subject, your next, I don't know, brush stroke. Try to let your hands guide your brain and not the usual way around. Try not to think for a moment and just let that art piece do its thing. Don't let your inner critic stop you from having fun. That relaxing, therapeutic sketchbook time everybody is talking about. That's what made you start art in the first place. Try to get that feeling back from doing random things in your sketchbook and just enjoying that experience.
And I was looking for some mushrooms in the forest because prior to going there, I was thinking of doing a mushroom page because I really I, I thought it was, thought it was cool, okay? But I um, didn't catch any. I didn't see any. I I don't know. Maybe it's too late. Maybe it was all covered in leaves. But I thought November is like mushroom time. I get all of my information of Animal Crossing, okay? <laughs> So one last thought I wanted to share was to start to build new habits. Habits are what will get you over your fear of starting over time, so it'll never come back. It makes me think of me not wanting to drive the car. Whenever I have a long break and I haven't driven in a while, I'm so insecure because it's out of my habit, my comfort zone. And only when I drive every day I know for sure how to do things and that there is nothing to worry about. So each day you practice or get into sketching, you get slowly better, even if you don't notice it, because it is a very, very slow process and progress. But what makes it easier to keep up is to build a small sketching habit. It doesn't have to be every day. It just has to fit within your schedule so you can keep up with that. And once you keep repeating it for a week, for two weeks, three weeks, it starts to become part of your routine, your habit, like brushing your teeth or drinking that coffee every morning. For me personally, it works best to do this right in the morning when I have a free day because I love getting stuff done in the morning while the sun is still out, but sometimes I also sketch while watching some show on Netflix in the evening, so it just has to fit your personal routine and life. Sometimes the page is lacking something. Sometimes I feel like color can make the page more pop or even some more details. It is a great way of fixing some mistakes because that way the eye is drawn to the more colorful side of the picture and guide the eye to look at this first so everything else is less prominent. So playing with different mediums and supplies can also help to either challenge yourself if you are trying something new, uh, something difficult or unusual, or it helps to give your page more variety. The more different a page looks, the more you can experiment with that and get loose or maybe get over the fear of starting a new page. Okay guys, I'm finished. I finished the first three pages of the sketchbook and yeah, I, th I tried to explain the process behind them and my thoughts because this fear of starting occurs every now and then uh, for me and I think for a lot of people, so I hope it helped a bit. Um, yeah, see you guys in one of my next videos. Until then, bye!